Tomo News presents Twitter. Teenager gets fired over Twitter and the interwebs have a field day. For the average American teen, there is always a time when working a part-time after school or weekend job is a reality. The jobs teens are given aren't the most glamorous, but hey, it does give them a taste of the real world while giving them a few hundred bucks a month to hang out without begging mommy and daddy for gas money, a real life lesson learned. But one Dallas area team named Sella chose to voice her disdain for her newfound gig on Twitter and promptly got a lesson in proper social media discourse handed to her by her almost boss. That boss, Robert Wapple, is the owner of Jets Pizza in Mansfield, Texas. Now, he hadn't used Twitter in the last six years, but after being tipped off about Celia's lack of enthusiasm for her new job, he had no problem logging on. That prompted some folks out there to question the obvious. Now, for her sake, Celia's initial tweet didn't mention Jets Pizza at all. And to me, it seems as if her First Amendment rights may have been stepped on. But she seems unfazed by the whole affair because of her Twitter follower count going up. She seems to have learned another lesson from this also called the Streisand effect. However, I hope she didn't really need the money. I don't think any of her new followers would send her a bi-weekly paycheck. Conan O'Brien sued for Twitter joke theft. Our favorite late-night funny man, Conan O'Brien, and his production company, Conaco LLC, are the target of a lawsuit filed by a San Diego man claiming Conan stole his jokes. Robert Caseberg says he is a comedy writer and that Conan stole a total of four jokes from his Twitter feed this year. Although the original post has been removed for some reason, Caseberg says that on January 14th he posted a joke on his blog which read, A Delta flight this week took off from Cleveland to New York with just two passengers, and they fought over control of the armrest the entire flight. Later that night, Conan said this in his monologue. On Monday, a Delta flight from Cleveland to New York took off with just two passengers. Two passengers on the whole plane. Yet somehow they spent the whole flight fighting over the armrest. <laughs> <laughs> Oof, that's remarkably similar. It's not impossible to see why Caseberg would want credit and compensation. Writing is one of the last Hollywood jobs that can't be computer generated, but competition for work is still fierce. So when you've got a joke that works, that tweet is solid gold, metaphorically speaking. But Caseberg thinks his tweets are gold, mm. literally speaking, and is suing Conan for $600,000, or $150,000 per joke. TV shows routinely pay outside writers a nominal fee for jokes like Caseberg's, which Conan should have done in this case. Caseberg's jokes are worth something, but not $600,000. He'll probably be happy with the settlement and the fresh name recognition this suit will bring. But maybe that's a bunch of quitter talk. Conan's longtime co-host Andy Richter tweeted defiance. Hope you're right, Andy. Taylor Swift squashes Twitter beef with Nicki Minaj. Taylor Swift is ready to end the pretend beef that exploded over Twitter this week over some meaningless tweets between the pop star and rapper Nicki Minaj. The country slash pop singer apologized in under 140 characters for the exchange that occurred earlier in the week, in which Swift felt she was being singled out by Nicki when Minaj went on a Twitter rant about not getting nominated for Video of the Year for MTV's VMAs. I thought I was being called out. I missed the point. I misunderstood, then misspoke. I'm sorry, Nikki. Swift tweeted out last night. That means so much, Taylor. Thank you, Minaj tweeted. I've always loved her. Everyone makes mistakes. She gains so much more respect from me. Let's move on. So now it looks like the only one still angry is Katy Perry and her grammatically challenged tweet from the other day calling out Swift. Apparently nothing has happened in the business world because Fortune magazine wrote an article on the fake feud, while Piers Morgan actually went on television to talk about this nonsense. As for Minaj, she went on to clarify her initial Twitter comments on Instagram, but uh, we're not gonna bore you with the details. What a bunch of snowflakes. A social media manager for a Maryland school district was recently fired for being sassy on Twitter. The victim of higher-ups with sticks up their asses. The hullabaloo began after a student sent a tweet to the Frederick County Public Schools account, asking if school would be canceled the next day, but misspelling the word tomorrow. Account manager Katie Nash replied in jest, asking how the student would learn to spell the word correctly if school was closed. 
The spectacular burn lit up the Twitterverse, with netizens very amused by Katie's quip. The student didn't take it personally, and even continued with the harmless banter. But clearly the uptight pansies that make up the school board did, since they fired Nash for her inappropriate tweets. Naturally, the firing led to a social media uproar, with Twitter users coming to Nash's defense and students clamoring to get her back. Nash has been surprisingly chill about being sacked, and says she understands where the school's coming from. Though, really, they couldn't have counseled or given her suggestions instead. Elon Musk called out by Vice for following zero women on Twitter. Despite focusing his efforts on revolutionizing transport and colonizing Mars, every now and then tech mogul Elon Musk is forced to deal with the distractions caused by PC journalists who have an axe to grind here on Earth. On October 4th, the visionary was called out by Vice Tech subsidiary Motherboard for not following any women on his Twitter account. Musk follows 56 accounts, 21 of which are male users, while the rest are brands or publications. In response to Motherboard's tweet publicizing its findings, Musk defended himself by saying he uses Twitter for news. He follows the sexes equally on Instagram. That's unlikely to stop the barrage of comments labeling him a sexist. From those who find correlations between how many men he follows and the lack of women in the tech sector. Other tech giants should probably have their guard up. Apple CEO Tim Cook only follows four women and Bill Gates follows 12. This is a lot like when rocket scientist Matt Taylor, who just helped the European Space Agency land a spacecraft on a comet, was called out for wearing a bowling shirt adorned with scantily clad cartoon women. Shortly after the article came out, Elon Musk went ahead and started following Katie Weaver of GQ magazine. Now, back to changing the world and advancing the species. I am Jack's non-existent edit button. You know the old saying, if it ain't broke, don't fix it? Try telling that to Twitter. Originally designed to be no longer than a text, the 140-character tweet has helped topple dictators and get reality show hosts elected president. On Tuesday, November 7, 2017, that era came to an end. From now on, all Twitter users, prolific twits included, have 280 characters to play with. And so far, it's totally led to more creative intellectual expression and informed political debate. Twitter reportedly tested it with a small group of users. 5% of tweets from the group wrote beyond 140 characters, 2% made it past 190. Now that's a company that listens to its users. Also gone is the character counter. That's replaced with a circle that goes from blue to orange and then red as you reach 280 characters. Because seeing red on Twitter really helps, right? We haven't managed to get there, but word is, when you do, you'll get the Nobel Prize in Twitterature. Turkey bans Twitter fails immediately. Last Thursday, in a pitiful attempt to halt the spread of widespread corruption allegations against his regime, the Prime Minister of Turkey, Tayyip Erdogan, declared war on social media while banning Twitter. The ban comes after widespread sharing of voice recordings and documents on Twitter that point towards massive corruption throughout the Erdogan administration. With elections coming up on March 30th, Ardwan is worried that more recordings will surface, so he got his courts and Turkey's telecommunications authority to block access to Twitter. Unfortunately for Ardwan, the number of tweets surged in the hours after the ban took effect. The hashtag, Twitter is blocked in Turkey, rose to the top trending term globally. Twitter posted instructions on how users could change the domain name settings on their PCs and mobile devices to disguise the fact they were in Turkey. Turkish tweeters were also quick to share use of VPNs to connect to the web undetected. Guess it's time for Ardwan to call Barbara Streisand. 
JP Morgan Chase learned just how much the public really hates it after Twitter users roasted the Big Four Bank during an open Q&A session with Vice Chairman Jimmy Lee that clearly someone with zero self-awareness thought was a good idea. Here's a sampling of some of the more colorful questions. What's the best way to get blood stains out of a clown suit? Hashtag ask JPM. Is it true that you paid a hitman to kill Mickey Mouse because he wouldn't pay protection? Hashtag ask JPM. When you pass a homeless person on the street, do you say to yourself, yes, I did that? Hashtag ask JPM. In reference to CEO Jamie Dimon, does Jamie Dimon have an opinion on the slimming appearance of prison uniform stripes? Hashtag ask JPM. How much blood do your executives consume on a monthly basis? Hashtag ask JPM. The company put a swift end to the Q&A session, but despite the shutdown, the insults keep coming. Go search the hashtag in Twitter. It's a hoot.